Welcome back to Open Line. We have with us State Senator Jeff Yarbrough, Democrat from Davidson County. Uh, just right before this show, he was on the floor of the State Senate. The House during the show passed uh, the budget that the Senate had already passed. So we are moving toward wrapping up this legislative session, uh, talking about several bills that have been out there. Of course, want to hear your thoughts. Another big area that people often uh, question us about, medical marijuana and just marijuana bills in general. Um, kind of where, where are we on that in the legislature this year? Well, I mean, so the legislature this year uh, put an end to all of the medical marijuana legislation. And I think that there are a lot of states that have advanced medical marijuana bills uh, and there's increasing bipartisan support for mar medical marijuana legislation in Tennessee. Uh, but those bills w did not advance this year, which I think is probably unfortunate. Why do you think there's increasing bipartisan support? Well, I mean, I think one thing is that we've seen the statistics from state after state that shows that where there are medical marijuana laws in place, there are fewer opiate prescriptions that get issued. Uh, and I think that, that the, I think the opiate issue has really changed minds a lot on this because it's opiates has been a scourge and an epidemic that has decimated communities and a lot of that's happened through legal drugs and frankly uh, what we've been talking about is illegal in marijuana while I, I don't think anybody's suggesting that 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 you know that people start using this for you know uh, like you know in a, in a in a reckless or aggressive way I think we do recognize that it's uh, would lead to far fewer overdoses than the amount of opiates that are flooding our system. Uh, and I think you, there are also a lot more people who have been willing to come forward and tell their stories about how they have treated, you know, family members, their children, uh, uh, you know, uh, with, with medical marijuana. And there's been some evidence from the scientific community that that actually is working. I mean, it's a, it's a, it actually has medicinal effect that does uh, you know, contribute to someone's health and well-being. The concern I guess some people have, and, and I, I, I agree, it, it, there is bipartisan support. You have Republicans that, yeah. that support this, and, and the argument that I often hear is the opioid argument, um, and that's, that's, that's a solid argument. What about, all right, if, if you just go to a doctor and you say, I, uh, and, and I have, I'm nervous or something, and then the, you just get prescribed medical marijuana. I guess at what point is it medical, and at what you know, how, right. how do we put safeguards on that if we were to pass something? Yeah, like I mean, this? I think there's two. I think there's I think there's a couple of problems. One is I think there's some people who just don't believe that this should ever be used for anything ever. It should stay illegal forever. Um, I think two, you've got people who think that this is going to work like some states that have just made this medical thing kind of a joke and uh, a doctor can write me a prescription because I've had a bad day and I can go to the store and, 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 and get medical marijuana. Obviously I don't think that if you're going to do a medical cannabis bill I don't think it should have any, it should not have that kind of leeway. It's got to have some safeguards that allows uh, you know medical professionals to be involved and to do this safely and not in a silly way. And I think the third and final piece is there are a lot of people who see the medical mar medical cannabis as a just as sort of a step on a, on the road to recreational use. Right. And I think that they're trying to put up a, a barrier against it. They think you get medical marijuana passed and then suddenly we become yeah, it's 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 legal in Tennessee. Right. Um, do you have what, what, how would you vote on both of those things, medical marijuana and just making marijuana legal in Tennessee? So, I mean, I think that recreational, it's, I think it's too early to tell on recreational. I mean, we've got states in the, in the country, Oregon, Colorado, a few others who have gone that, taken that step. I think it's perfectly reasonable to wait and see. Let's look and see what the health effects are, see what the criminal and educational effects are, try to make sure that the federal government clear, cleans up some of the, the the obstacles that happened uh, in those places before we embark on that. 
on medical cannabis, we are far behind. I mean, we're now one of a dozen states that hasn't done this. Uh, laws have been enacted in very conservative states like Arkansas and lots of our surround, lots of our neighbors around here, and it hasn't created a floodgate situation and hasn't led to everybody using uh, cannabis everywhere they go. I mean, the, the legislation that we're considering here isn't even for smokable, it is genuinely for uh, a, a pretty limited set of medical circumstances and a pretty limited use. Do you think, um, and then I'll start but I am for that. You're, you're for that. Do you think it has a chance of passing? It didn't pass this year. Do you think it has a chance of passing next year? I do. Uh, I mean, I think that, uh, look, I mean, this is something that, that voters are, are in favor of this. And politicians usually are behind voters, but they do usually catch up. And uh, voters across the state, young and old, Republican and Democrat, want to see movement on this. It's not a partisan issue from a voter standpoint. Uh, it's an issue that's moving. And I think if you look at younger voters especially um, across, the, across the country, I don't see that backing up. All right, let's go to Reverend Fuzz. Reverend Fuzz, oh, how are you doing? Hey, hey, Senator Yarbrough. Hey, Reverend I, Fuzz. I got some, I, I got some questions about this uh, legislation and how it's moving in Tennessee. Um, you just got to the point to say that most voters in the state probably favor the legalization of this stuff. One of the things I want to throw at you is how much does it cost our state because we criminalize marijuana over against the damages that are done by marijuana, like leading to another drug. Are, are there any proof that that's what happens? And can we really afford the cost of criminalizing marijuana as we've done? And then it seems strange that the legislators are not in line or in sync with voters uh, usually that's an indication of a real strong lobbying organization that's an industry. I can see in marijuana there's somebody who owns the company that does drug tests and that this may have impact their bottom line. I would wonder who are those industry that's lobbying against this medical marijuana legalization in light of the fact that probably an overwhelming two to one of people in the state if they were polled they would say legalize all marijuana you would probably have recreational and all kind of stuff and then one final point what do you see are the prospects of this being taken out of the legislature's hand and somebody putting it out there as a referendum on a ballot for the people to vote I bet they would vote against differently. That's my thoughts. All right. Reverend Fuzz, thank you. Um, what do you think? Start with the referendum. So, with, starting with the referendum, uh, we don't really have that kind of process in Tennessee that allows for citizens to start a petition and enact this into law. Uh, the only way we could do that would be to start at the legislature, so I don't think that's going to happen. I do have uh, legislation to get to a constitutional amendment that would allow for voters to. Uh, actually bring initiatives like we see in a lot of other states uh, and frankly stop some of the kind of sludge in the works that that uh, that stops good things from passing uh, but but right now I think that procedural uh, avenue is not available to us in Tennessee and then, I think yeah. there's no question there are some groups that benefit from the status quo and that could be testing companies or current uh, providers who who oppose this. I think the other place that you're seeing significant opposition to even the medical cannabis legislation is from law enforcement. Uh, and But to speak to Reverend Fuzz's, uh, the question he started with, uh, I think that we don't talk enough about this, which is the cost that we're already bearing as a state for having criminal, uh, the criminal penalties that we do on, on, on marijuana. Um, there, I mean, the, you're talking about one out of mo one out of two people in the state has probably smoked uh, marijuana. That is not how, but 
we end up sending a lot of people to jail and primarily in heavily policed areas. We've seen lots of you know, young people whose lives have been really complicated because they've gotten caught doing something that a lot of other people <laughs> across the state are doing as well. And uh, you know, I think that's really been unfortunate and we should see, and the legislature some, made some steps towards not punishing uh, small uh, possession offenses, but people still are developing criminal records and we still have a backlog of people who are in our criminal justice system for no other reason. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, it's interesting he talks about lobbying. What, what are some of the areas where the lobbying is most intense up there? <laughs> Um, would it be health care? Would it be, you know, that's interesting, medical marijuana? Wh wh where, do you, where do you encounter some of the most intense lobbying? Even the voucher bill, I understood there was a lot of lobbying around that. I mean, there's a lot. I mean, most legislation involves lobbying uh, at some level, and there, there are lots of groups that uh, have, that make money off decisions the state makes or will have their ability to make money constrained by decisions the state makes. It's not that surprising that we ha see lobbyists, but uh, it can be pretty intense on a lot of things. I think sometimes, uh, you know, I, th I think as long, we need better disclosure law so it's very clear wh who's spending what on lobbying and what they're lobbying for. I think the thing that uh, is also most missing is you know, I'll, I'm trying to use a good example. You know who doesn't have a lobbyist is consumers. Like if you sell something to consumers, you probably have a lobbyist. If you build something that you want people to buy, then you probably have a lobbyist. If you're a parent, you know, or just a person who wants to buy a TV <laughs> and wants, wants the best price and the most convenient way to do it, you're the person who's least likely to have a lobbyist. And so uh, finding somebody who's going to represent just the common person, man on the street, is what it's hardest, hardest to find and in the poor, bill. I mean, poor people generally oh, don't have absolutely. a lobbyist. And, and these lobbyists, again, they're, they're, I'm sure they're fun, doing important things, but yeah, that's who is not represented. That's and right. that can be problematic Yes, um, with a lot of the bills. All right, so we're going to take a break. If you want to call in, there's the number 615-737-PLUS, 615-737-7587. Take a break. We'll be back right after this.